So Nintendo has obviously made a lot of consoles over the years, all with different menus. And while menus seem like something that's insignificant, I think they're underappreciated and fun to go look back on in other consoles. So uh, in today's video, that's, that's what we're gonna do. Despite Nintendo currently being under fire for being big dumb, these guys know what they're doing when it comes to making menus. Bam, 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 come on, who doesn't want to play that? There's nothing like a really well-made game menu to make you want to play a game. And the more games that come out, the more and more they try to improve their menus. But a video game console needs to have a menu too, unless you're a SNES, NES, or N64. To come up with the designs for these menus, Nintendo has to make them look good while representing any game on the console. And they only get one chance to make it. But despite it being a challenge to make a good console menu, Nintendo makes sure to make a banger every single time. The first console menu they made though was surprisingly on the Famicom. I don't know if this is technically considered to be a menu, but it's more than what we got in America, so let's take a look. All it is are these pretty colors telling you to put in a Famicom disc. And also Mario and Luigi screw around with the lights. Obviously a very simple menu, but I think it's really cool and gets the job done. You could technically consider this to be a startup screen like the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, but I thought I'd bring it up anyway, cause like, when else am I gonna get to talk about that thing? So fast forwarding to the GameCube, which is pretty much the first Nintendo console with an actual menu on it. Of course, if you put a game in before you turn the console on, then you load straight into the game, which is always nice. The main menu is actually really cool though. It looks like, uh, you know the spherical console from Drake and Josh? It's like that, but like, squares instead of circles. And it also has a lot of different sections to look through if you're ever bored before you play a game. There's even a couple of sound easter eggs that you can do on startup that I'm sure you've all seen at some point before. Overall, the GameCube menu is really simple, but also really nice and clean, so uh, 9 out of 10. The next Nintendo console chronologically is the original DS. Obviously, the original DS menu has much less to offer than the future DSi, but don't worry, I'll bring that up later. The DS actually did have an interesting menu though, which is more than what I can say about the Game Boys. The menu let you set a date and time Time, along with choose your DS and Game Boy game that was in your DS. All of this was really cool, but they also have the option for DS download play, which is pretty much multiplayer on your DS when your friend has a game that you don't have. But also the best edition, PictoChat. Now PictoChat is very simple and it might be hard for you to understand if you never got the chance to experience it yourself, but I guarantee anyone who used this on the bus back in the day have very fond memories of PictoChat. There are four rooms in PictoChat that are only open to the people around you, so if you're in your classroom, they're all pretty much public lobbies. You get to send messages and draw pictures and while there isn't a lot to offer it was surprisingly fun and just a nice little feature that wasn't necessary to add but ended up bringing a lot of fun to people. Those are the more simple Nintendo console menus but soon came to be one of the most popular consoles in the entire world which was the Nintendo Wii, which also featured a more extravagant menu along with the Wii Shop channel. This pretty much allowed you to use your Wii as an app store on top of a Wii game player. This was in 2006 before most smartphones also, which makes this even cooler than it seems. When you first bought a Wii, it came with a few stock channels for you to look at and use, with the most popular one being the Me channel. As you all know with this channel, you get to create any kind of Me you want to use in various Wii games. The Miis of course became a Nintendo staple pretty much all the way up to the Switch, but they weren't all the Wii had to offer. For example, one of the free channels in the Wii shop was the Everybody Votes channel. This was always fun to do after school because you got to answer some fun questions with your Mies. I always used to use some of my Mies for my own answers and other Mies for the answers that I thought were the most popular because uh, I had nothing better to do I guess. Later Nintendo added a ton of more games on the Wii shop and even some original classics like the Mega Man NES games and even Super Metroid. Not only does the menu look aesthetically pleasing with all of the Wii channels but it also just makes the menu much more cool and entertaining for obvious reasons. So Nintendo said yo let's add those to the DS, and that's how the DSi was born. The DSi is just like the original DS, but now it has a literal eye that you can use as a camera. I don't know who played the original DS and thought, hey, this needs a camera, but somehow this was a good addition. The DSi doesn't have very many exclusive games for it other than what's found on the DSi eShop, but it's still a huge upgrade. Number one, if you go to PictoChat with one of these things, you get to draw in rainbow colors in PictoChat and laugh at all the DS light scrubs in your lobby. They also added something called Flipnote Hantina, which really just deserves a video on its own, but it was basically an animation tool that you could use to make animations and even upload them to the internet as well as watching other people's animations. The animations uploaded were mostly just 2008 memes in the form of YouTube videos reanimated on the DSi doesn't get much better than that. Having the eShop on the DSi though also gave it the ability to get classic games on it as well as lots of other DSi exclusives. One of my favorite being the Zelda Four Swords Adventure game. This game was only on the eShop for a limited time but it was free and it was surprisingly fun Zelda game. Another one of my favorite DS eShop games was Photo Dojo where you could take pictures of people and pose them into fighting characters for your own fighting game. I always took pictures of video game characters and just made worse Smash Bros but there was no Smash DS yet so I mean that's all we had. Anyway obviously the DSi menu isn't 
improvement from the original with all of its extra features. Not to mention having a camera and pictures on your DS allowed the menu to utilize the top screen more by randomly showing you one of your pictures you have saved, which is honestly really cool. Of course, Nintendo's golden era of video game consoles are all going to have really good menu design. But next, we have to look at Nintendo's most hated era, the 3DS and Wii U era. Honestly, I think the 3DS and Wii U era is overhated and not nearly as bad as everyone acts like it is, but regardless, let's start by looking at the 3DS. One of the first things you'll notice about the 3DS, other than the fact that it's 3D, is that you can change the menu of the 3DS to look like anything from the original DSi to the Wii menu with a grid of apps to use. You can also add folders to help organize everything better, and I think these two additions alone already add on to the already good menu of the DSi. The 3DS also introduced Street Pass, which was actually really cool and was fun to mess around with. Basically, Basically, anytime you had your 3DS with you at school, anyone else who had their 3DS with them would have their Mii pull up to your 3DS. Depending on the game you decided to play, the Miis did different things, but they were all really good and gave you an incentive to take your 3DS with you in public and to random other places. Me and LL Fried Rice and Taco Spartan 04 all brought our 3DSs to school a couple of times just so we could get Street Pass Miis for some game we were playing. And I don't even remember what the game was, but the Miis definitely helped. The 3DS also adds play coins, which are coins you earn by getting a certain amount of steps on your 3DS, which of course course also encourages you to take it with you on the go. The play coins can be used to buy different things in certain games and I remember enjoying these too except for the fact that it capped at 10 per day which I always found to be weird. Of course you could just change the date on your 3DS and get some more which is what I did but now I feel like a dirty rotten criminal. But seriously though all of these additions encouraging you to bring your 3DS with you wherever you go on top of making the menu more customizable and appealing over the original DSi is really cool and while this generation from Nintendo is definitely hated I think most people agree it's not the 3DS's fault. In fact, most people really enjoyed the 3DS and don't have very many problems with it. It's the Wii U where the problems lie. One of the most prominent problems the Wii U had were its specs, which I'll let my homie Zero XZ2 Gaming talk about. What the? Where in tarnations am I? This ain't my channel. Howdy there. Who said that? The Wii U graphics suck. The Wii U sucks? Well, you gotta go to sleep eventually. No, 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 I like the Wii U. I was talking about the graphics. Oh, the Wii U graphics suck? Yeah, that's not entirely wrong. A lot of games skipped the Wii U in favor of the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 because the Wii U was simply lacking in technical specs. That and it would have required devs to spend too much time downscaling and optimizing for the Wii U which would have inevitably sold the lowest because it would be the most inferior version. But conversely, Nintendo did know how to do a lot with very little and a combination of artwork and optimization led to some really good looking games like Super Mario 3D World and Mario Kart 8. Not all of Nintendo's own games looked that good, but that's just the technical limitation of the Wii U's weaker hardware. Now can you teleport me back to my channel? I've got sarcasm to deliver. Anyway, now that Zero is safely teleported to his channel safe and sound, I think you guys should also go teleport over there to receive the sarcasm he's delivering. And also because he's an amazing YouTuber and I've been subscribed to him for almost a decade, so please go check him out. He's really cool. Subscribe. Subscribe to him. Do it. So anyway, in terms of menu, the Wii U looks a lot similar to the Wii. The main menu is pretty much the Wii, except they added some folders for organization, along with a few other things, which is nice, of course. But the main problem with the Wii U that everyone had was the gamepad. Now, if you don't know how the Wii U worked, it was basically a prototyped Switch. So imagine instead of undocking your entire console, you just had this tablet thing that went with it. Personally, I liked the tablet for single player games and thought it was actually really comfortable to use, but it made the console much more expensive than it had to be, along with making it hard to develop for in terms of third party companies, so the Wii U was extremely overshadowed by every single other console that was out at the time. But the gamepad works great with the games Nintendo made for it. Of course, it has its flaws, but playing Splatoon on the Wii U with the gamepad is more fun than it should be. But another problem the Wii U gamepad brings is its menu. So while there's the Wii menu on the TV, there's another menu on the gamepad and you can switch which menu displays where. Except the only problem is the menu that isn't just the remixed Wii menu sucks. It shows Miis on it and it had the potential to be an interesting and unique Xbox 360 social tab-esque menu but it's just stupid. One thing the Wii U did bring that was good though and included into its menu was Miiverse. Miiverse was weird and no one knew what it was but come on it brought us a lot of really good memes so there's no reason to hate on it. Anyway that was Nintendo's nightmare generation summed up in terms of its menu and surprisingly it wasn't even that bad. But now it's time to look at Nintendo's Magnus Opus, the Nintendo Switch.
The Nintendo Switch is one of the coolest video game consoles ever to exist, but surprisingly it has a really simple menu. I think this is kind of an unpopular opinion, but I really do like the Switch's menu and let me explain why. So I'm a graphic designer and have designed many menus myself, so I kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to these things. A little bit. And the Switch's menu is very aesthetically pleasing as well as being a good combination of Nintendo's home console and portable console menu design. Instead of explaining what I mean using big boring words, look at the Wii U and Switch menus next to each other. I guarantee most people would say the Switch is better looking, though they might not know why other than it's just cleaner. And yes, there is much less stuff on the screen which does make it look a lot nicer, but I think the best word to describe it is organization. You have all of your games nicely lined up in the middle with your profile picture up top and anything else you might need right below your games. All having their own little icons. Admittedly, it might be a little too simple, but I think that's Nintendo incorporating the portability into its menu design. Home consoles can have much more complicated menus than portable consoles because they're displayed on huge TVs, while portable consoles obviously are not. So with the Switch being a hybrid, it needed something that would work for both. And while it may seem a little simple in terms of a console menu, when you look at the Nintendo Switch menu as a portable console menu in comparison to the 3DS and DSi, you can see where some of the inspiration comes from and I think it looks really good. Obviously, I could be wrong and Nintendo could have just commissioned some guy on Fiverr to design it, but honestly, I think it's well done and really well thought out. So having said all that, how would I rank each console based on their menus? Well, I think at the bottom, I'd have to put the Famicom one just because it, it doesn't do that much. It's nice and it looks pretty, but... It, it's just a cutscene. I love the GameCube menu and I could stare at it for hours, but there isn't much to offer aside from looking cool. I'd put the original DS next, only putting it above the GameCube because of PictoChat. Next, I'd say the Wii U because while it improved upon the Wii a little bit, I feel like it's more cluttered. After the Wii U, I'd say the original DSi followed by the 3DS, with the Nintendo Switch being the second best and the Wii being number one. Because I mean, come on, there isn't anything more iconic than booting up a Wii. Well, those were all of Nintendo's console menus of all time, and I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, unless please hope that Nintendo Switch does not update its menu, because that would make this video obsolete.